Thanks for staying with us. Now, the existence of NGOs is providing, uh, is proving rather to be a necessity rather than a luxury in societies throughout the modern world. NGO activities include, um, but they are not limited to environmental, social advocacy, and human rights work. They can work to promote social or political change on a broad scale or um, very local level. NGOs play a critical role in developing society, improving communities, and promoting citizen um, participation. NGOs contribute to curative health services, uh, service delivery by providing human and financial resource, uh, resources, materials, and equipment, sharing information, developing joint projects with the government, and developing national health policies as well as creating joint committees with the government. In what ways do you think we can start to leverage, right, reputable NGOs in Nigeria towards building our nation now? That's a question. Please just hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 one eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Weisho Africa one with the hashtag Weisho. So I'll hear your thoughts in two minutes, then I'll bring in our guests. What do you think? Because uh, so many NGOs, I, I, I know Project a lot. I know, um, what's this one, Mirabel Center. I know a lot of NGOs that are doing great work, you know, promoting different things, right? Some are for um, girls that are suffering abuse, some are for women suffering domestic violence. You know, the guest we have today, he's focused on uh, around the healthcare sector and the educational sector. He'll talk more on that when he comes back. But hey, what do you think? Because now, we're also at the time where elections are drawing near, and I know there are some NGOs that have started doing a lot of advocacy for um, PVCs and all of that. But let me hear your thoughts quickly, Mary. Um, Gloria, then I'll come to you, Mary. Um, NGOs, yeah, they, are, they have a very a vital role to play in the society. I mean, um, some NGOs go to areas where it's even most of these local areas and all of that. So um, encouraging them, especially now, if you notice, the problem now is, which I would say is, in as much as there are reputable um, NGOs, there are some NGOs. So I watched the video the last time mm. of the guy who, I don't know, I don't know if it's an NGO or who sends kids out to beg for arms. I think there are also non-reputable NGOs. So when, if we're able to um, differentiate the reputable and reputable ones and able to support them in ho however way we can, I think goes a long way, be it financial and all of that. Well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Let me hear Mary's thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I think in the country we've, um, let me say Lagos. Uh, mm. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. There's been a lot of NGOs and they've been doing great work, although I still feel like there's a gap that needs to be filled, you know, mm. in general. Absolutely. Sorry. <coughs> that cough will reject it. <coughs> Sorry oh, about God. that. So um, let me just bring in our guest. Now, with a deep-seated love for humanity, Mr. Nuhu Kwajafa has been a natural giver since early childhood. After a brief stint of work in his father's security consulting company, Kwajafa Security and Investigation Services, Nuhu re registered his NGO, the Global Initiative for Peace, Love and Care, and has since used this humanitarian platform to implement various charity projects for and on behalf of vulnerable women and children in Nigeria and other parts of the world. And he's joined us live from somewhere in the north. <laughs> I'm not sure where now. Hi, Nuhu. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Can you hear us? Hi, Hi uh, good. So, so where are you joining us from I tonight? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Where are you joining Abuja. us from? Abuja. Okay, thank you for joining us. All right, so Abuja. Nuhu... Yeah. I mean, we this um, conversation actually started when we celebrated World Heart Day last week, and we're talking about, I mean, the Kanu Heart Foundation. How you know, um, I didn't know anything about heart holes in the heart until um, um, Kanu Wankwa's, um, um, what's it called? His his life story was brought out in the open and all of that. And since then, he's been doing a lot of work in that space. And of course, your name popped up, and you know. And that's why we reached out to you to have this conversation. And the reason we try to broaden it beyond just heart um, issues, there are so many things that require that we start to be deliberate about if we truly must solve certain problems that we have in Nigeria. There's a problem of hunger, there's a problem of poverty, there's a problem of uh, poor education and all of that. And I believe that NGOs, right, reputable NGOs, 
can actually make much more impact than government organizations, right? But if you were to look at, you know, the situation, current situation in Nigeria, how do you think, you know, because you play in that space, how do you think NGOs can truly come in and make real impact? Okay, you know, from, uh, from my past experience and uh, from what I've seen, practically and uh, whatever, you, know, you see, the NGO thing has been bastardized in Nigeria. Absolutely. Or in Africa, that's where people believe uh, they, they look at the NGO as the goose that is laying the golden egg. Mm. And uh, where sincerity is 10%, then insincerity is 90%. Mm. So the reason why you found that a lot of NGOs today in Nigeria, they have so many reputable NGOs, but you see there's so much headache for them to further ahead because of the skepticism of donors, because of what had happened in the past before where NGOs embezzled funds meant for less privilege, and, and you know, 80% of Nigerians, when they think about opening an NGO, all they think about it, they're opening it because of foreign donation, foreign donor from foreign NGOs. And even the foreign donors, it became an issue where they don't really want to support NGOs in Africa because of the insincerity they have, they have to go through government, through Nigerian government or through the African government. And even sometimes the government agencies that they send money to are not really too sincere in those projects that money were sent for. So you see, he had the good and they had the up and down of it. But you see, for me, the way I look at it is, you see, government have a lot to play. In, in, in different from the way we look at it is, NGOs are supposed to be non-governmental and non-faith-based and the rest. But you see, they need to partner with government the reputable ones to make it work at work. Because you see, you see partner in the government gives you more room for creating forums to enforce things like patriotism. You see, patriotism is so important that because you can't say you love your country without showing love to your fellow Nigeria. Mm. So patriotism, dedication, hard work, Commitment. It's, see, it is not easy to set up an NGO. I remember 16 years ago when I decided to set up this NGO in the year 2006. I worked for five years, no donation from no one. I sold my car, sold my watches, sold my clothes, sold my lunch, sold everything. I, I, I was practically naked. Mm. But I wanted it to work. I, I wasn't looking for I wanted to be compensated. I wasn't looking for, oh, I was, no, that, that was what I felt at that moment that life is no life without showing love to other lives. Hmm. That is it, basic. If you are alive today, you think you have it all. The li life is boring without having people. Life is, is, I mean, you're lonely. No matter how much you have, how many houses can you live in? How many, how many cars can you drive? It makes no sense. It makes no difference. So, my belief and that the reason why that has been my my driving force is smiles on the faces of our beneficiaries. Remember the talk that called me last night. I said, Oh, dude, it's so surprising that you've been on for 16 years. You've been you raised over five million dollars for children all over Nigeria. You've gone to South, South Sudan, you've been hosted by the president of South Sudan, you've been hosted for everywhere, even in the US, Martin Luther King Foundation also you will have come. You're not on the national honor I said, listen, for me, award is not really important for me. What is important for me is the success stories. Hmm. Okay. What is award? Just a, just a play. I'm, I'm happy oh, you, you jumped the gun when you... I... Go ahead, No. So I'm happy that you jumped the gun when you brought up the issue of fraudulent activities that go on within the Nigerian... I mean, within the NGO space, especially here in Nigeria, right? Um, it's something that even I have also <clears throat> suffered because I have an NGO and people are actually, you know, apprehensive when it comes to donating. Because you see abroad, for instance, I mean, was it, um, <clears throat> was it, who gave what now? Was it Warren Buffett or Bill Gates that gave Warren Buffett? Somebody gave somebody 90% <coughs> of their income, right?
saying that because they trust that you are doing something yeah. good, I want to give you 90% of this money so that you can use it to impact lives globally all flying. over the world. Right? Globally over the world. We can't have yeah. those kinds of rep reputable institutions here. A lot of things that are happening, a lot of um, education funds, um, what's it called, uh, scholarships that have been awarded globally. So many people are leveraging on NGOs, right, in building communities, building um, estates, building so many things, right? But we are not able to replicate that in Nigeria. I, and, I, and I like the fact that you have actually brought it, you know, real home truth that we are the cause of this problem because a lot of us see NGO work as an opportunity to just collect free money. But let me come to Glory. I think she has a question. Um, okay, Mr. So um, um, I had the opportunity to go through some of the work you've done and I would say it's quite commendable. I see um, one of the things I notice is the level of accountability. So I see you, you say, okay, this day, this is what you're giving to this. There's transparency. So my question is, do you think... Um, um, NGOs, the existing NGOs in Nigeria are accountable enough or should be held accountable for the funds received from the public or the government or whosoever is donating to them? As an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And I like it. For me, since this is not your money, you're accountable to the people. It is not your funds. You know, I'll give an example. Like a couple of weeks ago, I said, the reason why it's so funny in Nigeria, today I'll give you an example now, okay. My name is Nuhu Kwajafa. I will say I want to contend for governor of Borno State, which is my state. I know I'm not going to win. I know I'm not still young in this game. But I'll set up a campaign team. I want to raise 50, 100 million. At the end of the day, money will be raised by friends for well wishes and the rest. At the end of the day, maybe out of the 100 million that was raised, I spent only 10, 15 million dollars for the primary and I lost. And at the end of the day, the balance of 75 million, I'll start buying G Wagon and Range Rover it belongs to me. No accountability. When when in America today, if you, today you're contending for an office of the president and they raise 50 million dollars for your campaign, and at the end of the day you won or you lost, and 10 million was spent or 20 million was spent, the really balance does not belong to you. It is not your money. That's how in Nigeria it is. In Nigeria today, everybody, the moment you want to raise. Four million naira for a sick child. You, at the end of the day, you raise eight or ten million. The remaining balance becomes your family business. Yeah, you want to pay school for that. But you see, it's not really done that way. You need to put. You see, you see, the major catch is like you going to a casino, you gambling. You see, no matter what, no matter what, your donors are the one keep you keep. I mean, keep. I mean, keep you going alive. Without your donors, you can never be alive. You, no matter how good you are. No matter your success stories, without you having good donors, they're all going to fade away. But you see, accountability, that's what I tell you. Today, if I have 1,000 people that can give me a 1,000 naira every month, that's a million naira, it's okay. Hmm. Using the power of volume. I don't need to have an Adenuga or Dan Wittin. No, they cannot be consistent like you give me a 1,000 naira every month. You're more consistent. And the only way I can make you to be consistent in what you're doing I need to be showing you reports before and after, mm. before and after. We, we've raised about five million here, remaining three million, which is good. What we're going to do, we're going to give the remaining balance of three million to the next child. That has been done. You know what? I'll give you guys an example. A couple of years ago, we said, you know what? When we're raising money, we'll put the account number of the parent of the sick child. At the end of the day, the family of the sick child always turned the sick child to be the goose that is laying the golden egg. I've seen a situation where we're raising two million for a sick child, and then when at the end of the day, the account they had about over about eleven million in the account. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. And it still allowed us to continue campaigning. So you know, and you think the irony about it, the sudden part of it, see, if you say you pay money direct to the family of the sick child, you don't trust them. If you say you want to pay the money direct to the hospital, you can only pay direct to a private hospital. That whatever they need, they'll buy it outside. But you pay money to a government officer. If it's today now in Abuja, I, I, I'm owing the uh, one of the Abuja hospital 1.3 million. How? We paid some donors said, Oh no, you know what? I don't trust your NGOs and I don't trust the family. I will pay direct to hospital. He paid direct to hospital. Time for surgery. They said, Oga, we don't have item one to seven. You have to go and buy it outside. 
And guess what? The money has been paid for that. Mm -hmm. We have time to give for new money. So 80% of the material you use for treatment and surgeries in government hospitals, you have to buy them outside manually. Mm -hmm. So some donors need to really understand, understand. If, you're dealing with a, if you're dealing with a private hospital, if they give you bill five million, pay them the five million, everything they need, even if they have to go to Afghanistan, they'll go and buy it and bring it because they have billed you. Hmm. But the government hospital wouldn't. They will tell you, okay, yesterday we had this, but today we don't have it. Hmm. So you have to go and buy it outside. And if you ask them, okay, we have already paid you for the money for the surgery, they'll tell you money has been the TSC account. I understand. But let me come to you, Mary. I think Mary had a question for you. Um, I would like to really commend you because I know that you're doing a very good job. At the same time, I would like to know what has been your biggest challenge so far and how can we overcome it? Um, also, how do we imbibe the culture of charity, you know, from a very young age to people? Because I feel like a lot of us also have the perspective that, ah, until I have Dan Kote's body before, I should be, doing you know, work. doing charity work. Ah, it's for the people who have, you know, such and so amount. At the same time, you, we also have people who are very deceitful, you know. They've turned the begging into... Um, a way of making money for themselves. You see a story online and the person is very touchy, the person is in the hospital, and then you're skeptical, ah, should I transfer this money to this account or not? So um, what has been your challenge so far and how do we overcome, you know, such such issues, you know, in the, in the NGOs, in the streets? You know, you know giving, giving is a gift and a privilege. It's a privilege to be in a position to give, and it's a privilege to be in a position to help. Mm. And uh, today you have a friend who has a millionaire, but he can't can give you a thousand dollars. Tomorrow you have a friend who has only ten thousand dollars, he can give you five thousand dollars. So you see, giving is a gift. It's all in the heart and in the mind and the way you relate to people. And uh, you see, I told a couple of people before, I said, listen, we need to grow this culture of giving. Let it be like a way of life mm. for us. The way you wake up every Sunday, I want to go to church. The way you wake up every Friday, I want to go to mosque. The way you wake up every Wednesday, I want to go to evening service. The way you wake up every day, you want to use the bathroom. The way you wake up every day, you want to eat. The way you wake up every day, you want to hug your child to say, I love you. Mm. Then that giving should be an everyday thing. Because let me give you an example. I'm 51 years old. And if I multiply 51 years by 365 days, I've spent over 18,000 days on earth. I'm not talking about the hours or the seconds or the minutes. So if I'll be sincere to myself, over this 18,000 days, days I've spent on earth, have I really thanked God enough for the gift of life? I haven't. Let's not lie to ourselves. It's not you, all about you waking up in the morning, going down on your knees, telling God, oh, thank you for today. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you. I have my gift. No. Every day you wake up in the morning, as long as you found out that you are alive, you are healthy, then look for someone to touch his life. Mm. You don't have to be your guide or your driver or your cook or anyone. So you see, when our children see us, oh, mommy, every Sunday or every Saturday or once a month, mommy is showing love to those in need. Mommy is showing love to those kids that can't go to school. Mommy is showing love to those kids in the hospital. You know, mommy from, you becomes a part of them. You work up your own shoes, your own clothes. You're not using it. You are building the capacity of the child. Mm. You are building the capacity. You know, let me even tell you one story. A couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, my my friend's younger brother, they asked him in school, "What do you want to be when you grow up? If you want to be like that, he said, like, they want to have houses in London, Dubai, America, and Paris. That is what he knows about daddy. But what can't you know? What about the daddy? I'm giving back to those in need. Mm. Showing love to the widow. Showing, you know, let me tell you. Let me let me, wait, wait, let me let me get one point. You see, people fail to understand something. Every prayer from a father or a mother is, "Let my child bury me." 
No mother or father prays to die before his or her own child, but it's not, it's not within your power. In between the power of God. But you see, whatever you see today, you neglect. Tomorrow it will destroy you. Hmm. Whatever you see to neglect today, I was I was once kidnapped by Flanny S. Man. And what saved me was one of the Flanny boys was wearing my NGO t shirt. Ah. Yes. Hmm. He was the one that recognized me. He told me, I know you, you are the one that gave me t shirt one year ago. So we will not hurt you. Wow. Yeah, your team can go. Wow. Wow. You know, so I, I like where Mary asked that question because um, I read somewhere, I'm not sure where now, that GoFundMe has banned Nigeria as a country. You know, people that create a GoFundMe account, they want to do some things and all that. Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you read that too, right? That Nigeria was banned. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never really that. used a GoFundMe account, so I don't know what how that works and I, there's something else again that was yeah. banned i'm not sure that is still in line with this um, organizations and that is because of the unique challenge that nigeria just has right and that's why mary's question i really yeah, want yeah. you to hit the nail on the head there's the part of that that uh, what's it called non challenge c that people are not willing to give and all of that but there is a unique problem because you mentioned something you were trying to raise two million naira for someone the parents did not even alert you when, they, when the, the, the funds had hit the 2 million, you understand? It was already at 11 million. So there is fraud in every, yeah. every one of us in Nigeria, right? So there's a unique challenge that Nigeria poses, <clears throat> right? So even if we were to deal with this, because now the donors are not trusting of the NGOs, mm -hmm. it's okay, let me give it directly to the people that need it. I mean, there was a year that Kate Henshaw had raised money for some child. I, I can't remember. It, it made news because it was all over. The, she had to come out to say, please, oh, you know, because she does that a lot. When there are cases, yeah, she would, that, yeah, she, she would pay, she would um, go on her page and please ask for funds and all of that. Even most of these celebrities now are a bit wary, asking the public for funds because of this uh, shroudiness or the cunning nature that Nigerians <clears> just have, right? So how do we surmount this unique because it's a but it's a big problem in nigeria there's just that level of, everybody just wants to um be fraudulent know. when they when there's an opportunity yeah. to be you see for me is uh there are some cases where a sick child that i handled i took picture with the child but i'll see the picture going online People are raising funds for the child while I'm still in the picture. Hmm. Yep, I've seen numerous pictures. So you see, but well you see, if you really want to help, just the way the other accountant lady asked a popular question, if you really want to help, you will go deeper. If I see a sick child online and I believe is a fraud or I don't believe with the storyline, I will go deeper to inquire where is the child? What is the phone number? How can I see the child? What state is the child? Can I come over and see the child? So you see, you can go deeper. Hmm. Thank you. Nigeria has happened if to you really want to have. <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's like it's like it's like it's like it's like your houseboy telling you Oh, I cannot pay my child's school fees. <coughs> and the story really touched your heart. You say, okay, oh God, what, what, what school is the child? Can I go and see the principal? Can I get an account number? Because some stories might be true, but just because of some other uh, scavengers, some other activity that you have been through, you will show it. You say, no, that was the reason, that's the reason why no matter what, no matter what story they bring to me, I will follow it to the latter. Mm. Till I see the block that there's nowhere to go again, this is a fraud. Because some are true. I know, yes. Even the go from me, see, like I keep telling people, I say, listen, the money is in Nigeria. I don't need foreign donor. Within 16 years, 
we'll be able to raise over five million dollars for children all donations within nigeria mm -hmm. i've not received a thousand dollars from anybody maybe thousand dollars from nigeria overseas but no foreign donor no foreign organization no foreign individual everything is here Okay, let's take uh, some comments. Um, I think, uh, Mary, you have a comment, right? If I'm not mistaken, um, go ahead. <laughs> or is that no. me or? I think that's you. Okay. Know. All right, let me quickly just take it. Perfect topic. Um, perfect topic you have on today on non-governmental organizations can be leveraged, how non-governmental organizations can be leveraged in Nigeria. The main problem is that many so-called NGOs are all scam. You don't see them, you don't start. And <laughs> an average, <laughs> an avenue for pure corruption, just like Uwa earlier said, NGOs like the Kanu Heart Foundation that, do, that done tremendously well in support of people with heart problems. We lack accountability in many NGOs around our country. Uh, gracias, great ladies at ways. Bobby Kennedy from Jalingo. All right, so, I mean, this issue cannot be, you, we can't, this uh, issue of, uh, what's it called? Fraud, fraud, fraud and corruption. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. But let's piggyback <laughs> to the topic, right? Do you really think that the NGOs are powerful enough to create an effective change in Nigeria, especially bearing in mind the unique challenges that we have? We have issues in the educational sector. The poverty gap is widening by the second. Um, there is problem to access to good water, clean health care, and all of those things. Do you think NGOs can really make a difference in Nigeria? Yes, they can. Sincere ones, though, because, but I can tell you, with the number of NGOs we have in the countries, if everybody is sincere, mm. With the number of NGOs we have in the country, if all NGOs are sincere, I believe we'll, by now we'll be able to solve almost maybe about 50 or 60 percent of the problem from education, from no, uh, uh, they have no access to water, girls have no access to sanitary pad, with the amount of NGO. But if you know the amount of NG, the amount of money NGOs receive in Nigeria, mm. then you will look at it again with the level of work being done. Nothing is being done. People are getting rich every day. People mm. are buying building, buying STV. I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's real. And even if even if government comes that's why government needs to like get into this NGO thing to scrutinize every NGO to know what you're doing, what you're not doing. Are you supposed to work or not? Because of those and some NGOs are just scam they are just scammers. If you see their office, they don't have to face me, face you, or face me. That's all. Get a picture. Do you know? You don't be able to tell something. Do you know that like every year, every December, like this year, December 11th, Sunday 11th of December 2022, every year my NGO always organizes like an end of year slash Christmas party for two to three thousand orphans. Do you know that there's some, there's some people that will go to my party hosting two thousand orphans and they will start taking pictures there? And the following week, you see it on their own website about their event. Ha! Hey, what's a little boy? Because, because, because you, you know what? For you to get foreign, for you to get foreign donation, you need content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can actually and agree with you. Mm. I agree with you because I have. A, go ahead. Sorry, I have an NGO, right? And we uh, deal with children, okay. and they play games every year. So because my event is really big, it's one of the biggest events, even the people at first, they were skeptical that is it possible that you can actually pull this through and give what you say you will give. Yeah. So because they've, after that first year, they were skeptical. By the next year, we were swarmed with people. I know smaller bodies that come into the NGO, bring in their players and make it look like it is also, yes. and yes. take pictures and go and post and all of that. So for those things, well, you don't really, it's not really so much of a big deal for me. As long as you're doing what you're doing, right? Mm. I am not bothered with that. But all I'm saying is that for whatever it is that is trusted in your hand, at least do your bit, right? Don't collect yeah. money. I had to put my event on a pause because it takes more from my personal account than, 
you know people think that oh when they see the event so big they think i have made money i always end up in negative in fact my sister i owed her for two years because she borrowed me <laughs> <laughs> she borrowed me i think about two million naira to 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 finish my payments and everything i owed her that two million naira for two years before i finally paid the final dime you know so <laughs> But I, I, hey, I get it. It's, it's a big deal, but it's a big issue that we keep talking about it. But hey, do you ladies have any final words? <laughs> um, what I would say is um, you're doing a great work. Um, I, f I know NGOs really they have an impact um, in nation building. Just keep doing what you're doing. And also, if there could be a whistle, I don't know, the policies, government policies that are regulating these NGOs, I feel like something NGOs can come together and look for frameworks and policies that can regulate them and put off all these bad eggs that bring in the bad names to the good ones. Mm. That's what I have to say. Well, do you have whistleblowers? <laughs> <laughs> Mary, <laughs> go I ahead. Think I, I think what's, what's <coughs> what doing... Go ahead. I mean, what doing... What's the quote that mm. it says? Doing good. What is what doing is what doing well. Yes. Yeah, so um, regardless of the fraudulent activities, there will always be fraud and, mm. you know, all these cunning things. I think what matters the most is your vision and your goal. You know, the people that you have truly helped yeah. will spread the word for you regardless of anything. And as long as you have those, you, you're honest to yourself, you're true to yourself, you make a mark in the world. You're doing a great job. NGO is a good initiative and definitely is going, is, it, it might not have made a great impact like in, in our country, Nigeria, but let's be honest, mm. it's, we've, we've gone so, far, so, you know, and absolutely. it's commendable. Absolutely. I want to quickly speak on something. If you, if you can pardon me, yeah, two absolutely. minutes, answer it very short. So I recently heard that Rolex is a non-for-profit organization. Okay. But what they then do is that whatever profit they make from the sales of their wristwatches, they then push it into organizations, into education, into different, you know, non-governmental sectors. sectors, right, to do charity work. How can NGOs begin to think in that yeah. system that you are a non-for-profit, but you are a profitable non-for-profit? Because even some schools I hear are also non-for-profit. But they are profitable. So what they then do with their profit is that they don't push it to other causes, right? So maybe they're solving hunger, solving whatever problem it is that they're solving. So how do we start to get NGOs to think in that direction? So you're not just sitting cap in hand waiting for a donor. How do we start to have that? You see, for that, we have to have participation mm. from almost every Nigerian to be part of it. Now I keep telling people every other city. The success story of my NGO is not one person donation. If I want to raise a million naira now, I will look for 1,000 people to give me a thousand naira. Mm. Or I'll look for 10,000 people to give me 100 naira. So everybody, no matter how poor you are, you have your, you have your own level that you can donate and the rest. Sometimes I'll look for 100 people to give me 20,000 naira, and within 72 hours, we'll be able to raise that amount of money. I'll give you an example. In 2013, we had a baby. The baby's name Okiki Jesu. She was born without a score. Yeah, the first that. child ever born in this world who scored. And how much was she needed was about $234,000 that was she, was she needed that money for surgery. And you know what? We say, this is no issue of crowdfunding again. Let's look for repeatable donors. And within 72 hours, We'll be able to raise that amount of money. We flew wow. the child to the U.S. Dr. Ben Carson conducted surgery and they delivered in the U.S. with a green card now. So wow. you see, for this is to work with that be participation. Mm. Today now, if today, if Don Jazzy, Davido, Whiskey, Tiwa, say, you know what, if you love me, every every month, donate 200 naira to save a life of someone. A hundred, two hundred naira by a million people is two hundred million naira. Absolutely. And you see, all this thing about no accountability. If you put your, if you put your mind and you put the structure together, there will be accountability. Absolutely. On that note, <laughs> thank you. We ran out of time. Like when we're having fun, we just <laughs> the time just goes. But thank you. No, we have to bring you back because uh, I love the conversation and I think we'll keep on talking about this. We need to start getting people to be a lot more conscious of what needs to be done. True, thank true. you so much, Nuhu. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Glory. I think we had a fantastic conversation. Now, before we yeah, go... So good night. Good night. Thank you. All right, before we go, ensure you follow us.
everywhere at Waste Your Africa, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of them. You can drop your comments. More importantly, follow the engagements, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you miss today's quote, here it is again. There is one kind of charity common enough amongst us. It is that peach, or rather, it is that patchwork uh, philanthropy which clothes um, the ragged, feeds the poor, heals the sick. I am far from decrying the noble spirit which seeks to help a poor or suffering fellow human being. However, what advances a nation or a community is not so much um, to prop up its weakest and most helpless members, but to also lift up the best and the most gifted so as to make them the greatest service to, um, of greater service to the country. I mean, this is very, very important. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. It's our ladies' night out as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.